Welcome to our first Algebra 1 SOL prep packet. In this packet, we will be focusing on functions. A relation is a function if, when it's in pairs of x and y, each input or x has exactly one output or y. x cannot repeat in this situation. When we look at graphs, you can slide a vertical line, which is up and down, from left to right over the graph, touching only a single point on the graph at a time. This means it passes the vertical line test. Function notation is something you may see. It looks like this, f of x equals. It's the same as y equals. So let's look at some examples. Number one says, identify which of the relations below are functions. So when we see points, let's go ahead and label x and y for my points, okay? Then I'm just gonna look at all the x values because remember, if it's a function, my x values don't repeat. So I see here with 25, it does repeat. So that one is not a function. Letter B, again, we have points. So I'm gonna label them x and y and look at all of my x values. I have five, eight, 11 and 14, and I notice that none of them repeat, so that one is good, that one is a function. If I look here at letter C, I have my X values, this is one is, is in a table, so my X values are here and my Y values are here. Again, I'm only looking at my X values, so I have 12, 18, 14, 19, and 14. So I see here I have a repeating 14, so that one cannot be a function. When I look here at letter D, this time I have a graph instead of points. So this time I'm gonna use that vertical line test that we talked about. And that means that I can draw a line anywhere on my graph and only hit one point. And in this graph, that happens. I've only hit one point, so that one is a function. Letter E, Okay, again, I have a graph, so I'm gonna draw vertical lines through each of these individual points. And so far, when I draw these first two, I only hit one point, so so far I'm good. Still good. This last one, if I keep going, I hit two points. Okay, so I've hit two points. It does not pass my vertical line test, so that one is not a function. And now let's look at letter F. This one looks a little bit differently. This is called a mapping. And for this one, we put X and Y. These are our columns. So all of these are my X values and all of these are my Y values. So this one is similar to our coordinate points. So if we have two for my X value, I follow the arrow. Three is my Y value. I only have an X for a Y, so that one's good. One goes to nine, that one works. If we look at negative five, negative five goes to three, and it also goes to negative three. That would mean negative five repeats, so it fails there, and f is not a function. So our functions are only letters b and d. Let's look at our next section. In this section, we are going to talk about domain, which is all of the x values and my range, which is all of the y values, okay? If you are given a function as an equation, we're gonna use Desmos to graph the function and identify whatever it's asking for. So there should be a Desmos graph located on the website where you have this video. So go ahead and you can pause the video and locate that. We are gonna be using that in just a moment. So for number two, it says state the domain, remember which is x, and the range, which is y, for each of the functions below. So again, when I have points here, I like to label them x and y, because for my domain, which is x, I'm gonna do these nice little curly brackets, and I'm gonna list all of the x values, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. And for my range, I'm gonna list all of the y values. Again, we start with curly brackets, 
negative 1, negative 3, 5, and if we notice there's a second 5 here, I don't have to put it twice. You only need it once. If I look at letter B, again I have a mapping like I had before, so my X's are all in this column and my Y's are all in this column. So again, my domain is my X. I'm going to do curly brackets and then list anything that's in my um, domain or my X column. Even though they're letters, they're still part of the domain for this example. A, B, C, D, and E. And close it off with your curly brackets. That's the domain. My range will be all of the Y's that are here. So curly bracket. Here I have three and then a zero. We like to go in order. So we're going to write the zero first and then three, six, ten, and fifteen. My next one, if I look at letter C, okay, I have a graph here. can still find my domain and range. I'm going to, look, I'm going to label here, this is my x-axis. And this is my y-axis. So remember my domain is my x's and my range is my y's. So here I'm going to travel from left to right. We want to go from negative numbers to positive numbers. So my domain, again, you're always going to start with the curly brackets. Okay. This point here, I look at the x value, and that one's going to be here at 1, 2, 3, negative 4. Then here, this one is at negative 2. This one here is on the line at 0. This one here is, up, is at 2. And my last one is at 5. And close it with a curly bracket. Okay. My range is going to be similar. Start with my curly brackets. And then I move up to this one here, which is at 1. And then here I have two points here at my next one, and I'm only going to write it once, just like when we did over here with the 5. We had two 5s and we only wrote it once. That's what's going to happen here too. And lastly, up here, I have 2, 3. This point is at 4. And close it off with some curly brackets. In letter D, I have this graph, okay, and the graph will go on forever. Even though there's not arrows, we can put that here. It's assumed that that graph goes on forever. So remember, here's my x-axis, and I have my y-axis. So my x-axis, if I look at this graph, it goes on forever and ever in both ways. So my domain, we don't have to do curly brackets here. We can just write all real numbers. And my range, remember that's my y values. So if I look here, I have y values all in here, but then down here there's no graph. So my range, I do start with curly brackets, and I write my y and then a bar. I'm going to write y again this time. So if we look at here, the lowest point on my graph is here, and then it goes up. So I'm going to say that my y's are all greater than or equal to 1 because the graph has its lowest point at 1 and then it goes up. For letter E, we don't have a graph, but we're given an equation. So this is where we're going to use our Desmos. So go ahead and pull up your Desmos, okay? Make sure it's all cleared out. And we are going to type in the equation that it gives us. So here it says f of x, but we can just write y. They're the same thing. So y equals negative parentheses x minus 2, close my parentheses, squared, that's this button here, plus 3. You can get rid of your table there. And now we have a picture of the graph. Okay. If we notice, this graph looks similar to our other one, but it's a little bit different. Okay. It is going down this time. 
That doesn't really affect our domain too much. If we look, and here you can actually scroll down and see that it keeps going on forever and ever for this one. So it just kept going. So our domain is still going to be all real numbers because it goes out forever and ever. Our range though, okay, the graph starts up here and it goes down forever instead of going up like our other example. So instead of having a greater than symbol here, we're going to do y and then a bar. y is less than because it's going down. And if we look at my graph, the highest point it goes to here is 3. 1, 2, 3. So the graph is less than or equal to 3. Okay. Let's go ahead and flip our paper over and look at our x and y intercepts. Our x-intercept is a point where a graph touches the x-axis. We write that as the point x0. There are a couple ways we can name x-intercepts. They are also called zeros, roots, or solutions. So if you're asked for any one of those words, you're still asked for the x-intercepts. A y-intercept is the point where the graph touches the y-axis. It should look like this, 0, comma, the y-point. Let's look at some examples. In example three, it says state the x and y intercepts of the functions below. So again, let's label our x and y axis. And we see here this line touches my x axis right here. So the x intercept is negative one, zero. My y intercept is where this graph touches the y axis which is going to be 0, comma, 3. Okay. Letter B, it gives us an equation. And again, when we're given an equation, we want to graph in Desmos. So we're going to pull up our Desmos graph. We can X out what we had there before. And we're going to go ahead and type this one in. So I have 3x minus 2y is equal to 12. Okay. So here I have this line, and I can actually see my x and y intercepts. Your Desmos graph will highlight them for you, and you can just click on it. So my x-intercept is here at 4, 0, and my y-intercept is here at 0, negative 6. So I'm going to write 4, 0, and 0, negative 6. Okay. Lastly, number four, it says to state the zeros of the function below. Remember we said zeros were the same as x-intercepts. So here we only really want to look at what's happening at the x-axis. So I see this graph touches my x-axis three times. Okay. So we're going to name all three of those points. So I have negative one, zero. 2, 0, and 5, 0. And those are my zeros for this graph. In our last section, we're going to talk about evaluating functions at a point or identifying if a point is a member of the function. So here we're going to type the function into our Desmos graphing calculator again. We're going to press this little gear followed by this picture of a table to see the table of values. We can type in an x value if we want to know what a y value is. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So some examples you might see is it says given f of x, remember f of x is the same as y, equals x squared plus 4x minus 8. It says evaluate f of negative 10. So when there's a number here, this is my x value. So if they give you an x value, what they want is the y value. So let's go back to Desmos, x out our, our previous problem, and go ahead and type that one in. So it says y equals x squared 
plus 4x minus 8. And we can look at the graph here, okay? But we really want to take a look at the table. So we're going to click this gear. It says edit list. And we want to click on, we want to convert it to a table. So it says f of negative 10. So here are my x values. And here, even though it says the equation, these are my y values. So I want to click here, and when there's when you're asked for a y value, we can just type in the x value, which is negative 10, and it gives us here 52. So we can write y is equal to 52. We can also write it to say f of negative 10 is equal to 52. When x is negative 10, the y value is 52. Okay. Number six wants us to wants us to answer this question. Is the point 1, negative 3, here's my x and here's my y, a member of this function? So is the point 1, negative 3 a part of this function? So if we notice, it's the same function from number 5. So we don't really have to change too much. We're going to look at our table and it said 1, negative 3. And look, that, that point is on this graph and in the table. So yes, 1, negative 3 is in is in the function. Okay. And our last question says, Complete the table for the function f of x equals 1 half x minus 6. Okay, remember f of x is the same as y. And it has us, it wants us to fill in this table. So it gives us some x values and some y values. And remember these f of x is the same as y. So let's go back to our Desmos. We can x out our previous problem. And we're going to type in the function it gave us for number 7, which is y equals 1 half, okay? Notice how your cursor is in the bottom. We have to arrow and type x minus 6, okay? So again, we want to take a look at my table. So I'm going to click edit list and take a look at my table. Here's my x values and my y values. So on your table, it does ask for when x is negative 2, what's y, which is negative 7 that one we can just write in. The next one says y is negative 6, what's x? So let's look in our y column here, we can get rid of this. Our y column is negative 6, we come over to x, that one is 0. And the next one asks for when x is 2, what's y? Well it says negative 5. So sometimes you can just look at the table, but other times here it's asking for when y is negative 4, what's x? So if I come back here, I don't have negative 4 here, and I can't type it in like I did um, in, the, in example 5 with the negative 10. So I'm going to come down here, bring back up my keyboard here, and I can write y equals negative 4. Okay? You should have a line come across, okay? and we want to know where does this line touch our line. So let's get rid of this so we can see the graph a little bit more and we want to see where they touch. It may take a second sometimes. There it is. 4, negative 4. So my y value is negative 4. My x value is 4. Come back to my table and put 4 right there. Okay. We've reached the end of our video. Now it's your turn. Work on the practice problems that you'll find on the next page.